In prison, Trini became a Mexican Mafia associate and many of his Florencia Trece homeboys were made guys. For the most part, Trini was a conforming convict who did his own number and stayed away from prison politics. In life. I lost track of Rock on Lou and I heard he passed away on the streets in the 80s from drug related issues. I forgot to mention, like most of the others, he loved heroin. He loved heroin. Revolutionary worker, what inspires you to continue struggling today? Luis Talamant as I am inspired today as I was then, by prisoners that I have known and have felt a life bond with. One prisoner who I hold really dear to my heart is Luis Lopez, who for 20 years was a solid cross-cultural comrade, proud of his own Mexican heritage. Luis Lopez who I knew and Sundiata also knew since Juvenile Hall, Youth Authority Days, is typical of so many of the struggling prisoners today. On Father's Day 1996 when he died, part of me died with him. As one of the 26 prisoners freed on August 21, 1971 at San Quentin, Luis Lopez stood with us, struggled with us and also bore witness to the death of George Jackson, Luis Lopez, whose death could have been my own, keeps me struggling. He should never have died in the abject state he did. He was given no treatment despite complaints and attempts to have medical attention given to him. The Pelican Bay Information Project visited him and monitored his case for a number of years while he was at Pelican Bay. He always gave me the fist salute. We knew who we were and we knew in our hearts we had come on the revolutionary road together as prisoners and we would stand and die together. I speak of Luis Lopez because he was an example even when he was being set upon and beaten by the guards. He was never quiet, he resisted under stress and punishment. He made the rest of us strong even though he stood in chains. We rallied to each other, we embraced each other, we supported each other. I want to pay tribute to my comrade, my friend who died after being transferred from Pelican Bay to Cochrane. He was never told until the last month of his life that he contracted bone cancer. He had complained about aching bones, which a lot of prisoners today complain about, aching bones, soreness, weakness, that abject state when there's no exercise, no sunlight, within the tomb of Pelican Bay. Prisoners never get out in fresh open air but are kept in their cells, temperatures sometimes up to 90 degrees during the summer, a month after he died. A letter from him reached me via another prisoner, scribbled by a very weak hand. It said here is the last information I have for you. There has been a number of cell extractions this month. I heard the buzzer go off extraction team buzzer go off so many times i have laid here and i have counted and i have written it down it showed his dedication that even while he was dying he tried to let me know what was taking place within the bowels of the prison to assist me in the work of monitoring the abuses there Art
uh, bring him on board until he knew he had enough people with him that were not going to shoot up the dope and screw up his contact. And so I'm the one that convinced Joe that you know, he knew I was a non-user. I didn't use heroin. So I had Sailor, who was a heroin user, but he was my right-hand man.